now we're going to get into um, Chernobyl. In the middle of the night, a man who is in charge of Chernobyl, and oh, there's a thing, I want to talk about the bathtub curve first. Nuclear power plants are like people. So um, there's a bathtub curve. When, you, when you're just born, and in infancy, you're vulnerable to all sorts of diseases and infections, although now because of immunisation, don't tell me you're against immunisation or I'll have a fist fight with you. Because of immunisation, people don't tend to die. But if you go to the old graveyards, there are lots of tiny little tombs of children who died of diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, you name it. And we've eradicated them. And I don't think young women understand that because they've never seen these diseases. A child trying to breathe with diphtheria. My great aunt died of diphtheria. Well, at least we've, uh, we've got rid of those and meningitis now too. But anyway, children are very vulnerable in the first few years. And as middle age and stuff, you're pretty okay. And then when you get to old age, your pipes get rusty like mine. I've got a big plaque in my aorta and I'm nearly 77. Same with nuclear power plants. They're very vulnerable in the first year or two of their life, then they settle down, and as they get older, their pipes get fragile, they're embrittled, they tend to break, uh, except that your NRC is extending the lives of nuclear power plants from 40 years from which they are designed for another 20 years because you pay for everything. You pay for the mining of uranium, the enrichment, the... Uh, Price-Anderson Act, insurance, you pay for that. You virtually pay for the construction of the reactor, but then the utilities get the reactor, and they make a, a million dollars a day selling electricity. So it's good for them to prolong the life of the reactor because they make more money. Then you're left with radioactive waste, which lasts for a million years, and it's got to be kept cool for a long time. Um, you're, you pay for that too. So it's a socialised industry. And so is the weapons industry. It's socialised. It's made by your dollars. So therefore, you live in a socialised country. You have socialism in America for the nuclear industry and the weapons industry, right? And all of the rest of you, you have to be capitalists. That means you can't afford health care, you know, and you're struggling and too bad for you. You know, I've got to fill out all these forms, insurance companies. There's, insurance companies shouldn't be in medicine. We're not here to make money. We sh we're here to serve our patients. And if our patients can't afford to pay, they'll give us a chicken or they'll give us a cake because we're here to help them. And medicine is not about making money. So the insurance companies have to be get the hell out of it. Hillary Clinton was elected. Oh, no, she wasn't. Her husband was elected to do that, but she didn't do it. OK, so what happened was Chernobyl was only three months old. And there was this man who is a, a, a specialist in hydroelectricity, and he did a crazy experiment in the middle of the night. And there was a huge explosion. And the control room filled up with white dust. And these two young men who were helping him, he said, go out and see what's happened. They came back and they said, it's gone. He said, what's gone? They said, the reactor's gone. He said, don't be ridiculous. Go out and have another look. They came back and it was gone. It had exploded. And because the moderating rods were not made of boron, they were made of graphite like lead in a pencil, it burnt tremendously hot, lifting the isotopes into the stratosphere which circulated around the globe for day, days, weeks and months. One stupid man. And if someone said, name me a power plant that makes electricity that will devastate a nation. 40% of Europe is now radioactive. I don't buy European food because I don't know where the food is coming from. And I didn't explain the, the, the chain, the food cycle. These elements concentrate in the grass by orders of magnitude, 10 to 100 times or more. Then the cows eat the grass, and I'm no good at cows, <laughs> but they have an udder. <laughs> and they, they eat the grass, and, and so the strontium-90 concentrates by orders of magnitude in the cow's milk, and then the children drink the milk, which they should do. I don't quite understand all this dairy business, because breast milk's for babies, and it's the best thing they can possibly have, etc. But um, 
then, then we stand at the apex of the food chain and these elements concentrate most highly in our bodies. Now, you can't taste strontium-19 milk. You can't smell it and you can't see it. These things are invisible. You don't eat a piece of fish that came straight across from Fukushima and is being sold here. Where are we? We're in Florida. Yeah, your fish are probably OK, because that's the Atlantic, right? But the Pacific, I'll tell you about that in a minute. You don't say, mm, I can taste the cesium in this fish. So it's invisible to the senses. And that's another ace up the sleeve of the nuclear industry. Um, so the bio con it's called bioconcentration. Now, what was I getting on to? I've lost my... What? Oh, yeah. So this thing exploded. So I, I've gone through... What happened was... Um, the, the Yeah, the bathtub, yeah. The Russians and Gorbachev denied the accident for 10 days. The radiation was picked up in Sweden. The Swedish said, what's going on? And, uh, and then it came out. But for four years, no one studied it, no one did anything. And then they started to look. And then they started to see thyroid cancer and all sorts of diseases. And I'll, I'll talk you through all of the diseases that Chernobyl caused. Now, <laughs> your nuclear industry, no, first of all, the World Health Organization is allied with the International Energy Agency, the IAEA, whose mission is to promote nuclear power around the world, and by doing so, actually promote nuclear weapons, but they don't say that. So, but they've signed a contract with WHO to say WHO can't ever examine the medical consequences of a nuclear accident unless the IAEA says they can. So the WHO has never looked at Chernobyl and never looked at Fukushima, and they say only 60 people died at Chernobyl. Now, I would say that it's immoral, unethical, and criminal for scientists to lie. If we lie in medicine, if we lie in medicine about our patients, we could kill them and we would be deregistered. And when I hear Rush Limbaugh and these characters just promoting, spouting lies the whole time about global warming and the like, he should be put in jail because the earth is in great danger. It's in great danger. And as Elizabeth Warren says, all the people in the Wall Street who brought about that terrible crash, they should be in jail too. Anyway, now, so um, after Chernobyl, um, finally the Russians and epidemiologists and doctors wrote a whole series of papers about their patients and what they were seeing. And these papers were then translated from Slavic into English and published by the New York Academy of Science. And uh, by now, over a million people have died because of Chernobyl, over a million. Um, so 28 years after the accident, 50% of 13 European countries are still highly contaminated with long-lived radioactive elements. Before Chernobyl, 80% of the children in Belarus were healthy, and now only 20% remain in good health. A lot of the children suffer from premature aging, which is what we call progeria in paediatrics, I'm a paediatrician, and they get very wrinkled skin, they go bald, they start having heart attacks and strokes when they're really young. Millions of people are exposed to very high radiation doses from very short-lived elements. Now, the elements that only last days, they're very radioactive and then they decay. The long-lived elements, they are too, but it's a short... So if you're in, immersed in the cloud of radioactive elements on the first few days, if you're near a nuclear power plant, if you, where's your closest reactor? Tampa. Ta Tampa. Tampa, Florida. Is that near you? Yeah. How far? Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. How many miles? Seventy. Yeah, so you're, you're at great risk. Um, and if there's a meltdown, what do you do? Well, they say you go inside and shut the windows. <laughs> they say... <laughs> Or you evacuate. Well, how do you get your kids out of school? And, you know, it's just hideous. And you're breathing this stuff in all the time and the sirens are going off. Um, for, for four months after the accident, 400 million people lived in highly contaminated areas. Now, there's a, there are two reactors at Indian Point, 35 miles from Manhattan. 
the terrorists who flew into the World Trade Towers were actually going to fly into the Indian Point reactors, but they thought they were protected by anti-missiles that would hit them. So they didn't. They went into the world and only killed 3,000 people or so instead of contaminating the whole of New York and the financial capital of the world. Um, so the, the, the country, Europe's covered with all of these things, plutonium, cesium, strontium, technetium, you name it. There's an element called plutonium-241, which lasts for about 4,000 years, but decays to one called americium-241, and these are alpha emitters, which is much more soluble than plutonium-241 and very readily incorporated into food and is highly carcinogenic, so the contamination in Europe will become increasingly radioactive over time. Am I going too fast, or are you with it? Plutonium-241 decays to americium-241. Okay, so there was a very high incidence of cancer um, in, the, in the children. Premature ageing, there are a lot of cataracts. When you're exposed to radiation, you get cataracts, and a lot of birds in the exclusion zones around Chernobyl and Fukushima have cataracts. Osteoporosis... Um, arteriosclerosis, type 2 diabetes, because cesium concentrates in the pancreas, which produces insulin. Um, OK, what else? Uh, of course, radiation depletes the immune system, so there were tremendous amounts of infectious diseases like flu and pneumonia and all sorts of diseases, which we normally can keep under control, and those people died. The people, children who were in utero in Sweden, at the time have, and Sweden's done this study, have lower than normal IQs. You're Swedish, I can see you nodding. Um, and because neonates are very sensitive and the developing brain is very, very sensitive to radiation. Many children have abnormal EEGs. Um, and it's noted that 45% of babies in utero, in utero in Hiroshima and Nagasaki also experienced intellectual retardation. Babies were born with tiny eyes called microphthalmia um, and, uh, and retinal pathology, thyroid cancer. Um, in Belarus, 7,000 children have developed thyroid cancer. In Fukushima, it's about 110 now who've developed thyroid cancer. The normal incidence in children is one or two per million. But in Japan, they say it's not because of the accident. The, the lies are just extraordinary. Um, congenital aberrations, well, I'll show you some slides in a minute to show you what it looks like, but the number of congenital malformations range from 12,000 to 83,000 children born after Chernobyl. There are homes full of grossly deformed children that we've never seen in the history of paediatrics before. And then there were the liquidators. They had um, 600,000 men they brought from all over Russia, most of them in the army, and they were not supplied, well, clothing won't protect them anyway, and a huge number of them died subsequently of acute radiation illness and cancers, and they, and they developed alcoholism, many suicided, psychotic illnesses, and the like. So that's Chernobyl. This is a, my book, it's available outside, called Nuclear Power is Not the Answer, which goes through all of this in much more finer detail.